Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Built Not Bought. Built Not Bought, not Built Not Brought. Man, the amount of people that say that, my dad says that, of all people. Anyway. We're back for another episode. We're going to be looking at fuel systems today. But before we get started, you obviously see it's Movember at the moment. So I'm growing the moustache a bit longer than usual. Oh, hello? The moustache looks shit. I should shave it off. Hello? Private number. Bloody hell. Anyway, where were we? So I'm growing the moustache from November. It may stay, it may not, who knows. Basically, there's been a lot of forwards and backwards with this thing trying to get it right. So we had the first tune done and we took the airbox lid off, which gave us another like 80 horsepower. So we're actually, I'm doing an episode on upgrading all the intake piping under the bonnet, which will probably be the next video to come out. But on the flip side to that, when I was in Harrop last, we had the air lid off, so we had you know as much air as it needed, and we discovered that the fuel system was the next limitation. So it was leaning out at about four and a half thousand. Now that's no good. It can actually blow the engine up, and obviously it affects the performance as well. So in today's episode, we're going to be upgrading the fuel system. So I'll quickly run through what we've got. I've decided to upgrade to a uh, it's a Walbro 460. Now this is a TI Automotive pump. Now Walbro or TI Automotive have been manufacturing the Walbro pumps for years. So this is kind of the genuine one and it's got 415 litres per minute of pump. Whereas the one I've got at the moment, I think it's 255. So it's definitely going to sort that problem out. And I got two of them, obviously one for a spare. Now I keep that in my spares box. So whenever I'm cruising somewhere remote, if the fuel pump sits itself, then I'm stranded. So I always have a second one with me. I've got a new um, regulator. So the fuel pressure regulator that I currently got set up is a standard one, well it's not standard, but it, it, it regulates it to 58 PSI on its own without any extra adjustment. Now that's not gonna be able to handle this pressure. It'll push through that. So this is an airflow pressure regulator that I can actually set and dial in. And to check that, I've got a gauge I'm gonna put on the end of the fuel rail in the engine bay to make sure I get that 58 PSI bang on. And I've also got a sub tank fuel pump, not really related to this video, but for some reason, that pumps itself as well. So I'm gonna just sort that out by putting an aftermarket low pressure pump in there. But what I've done, obviously, I've pulled the tray off, it's up on the hoist, so the car is just down to the chassis where I can actually access all that fuel stuff. The first job will be to pull the sender out. Once that sender's out, I think the shape of this new fuel pump's slightly different to the one that's in there, so we might have to make some changes to that sender so it's sitting at the right depth. And then we'll look at removing all the standard or the old regulator system, look at what fittings we need to get, install the new regulator, plumb the thing up, and then we should be looking sweet. Ah! All right, there we go. We've got all the old system removed. Now, before we go any further, you can obviously see I'm wearing the new Built Not Bought Hi-Viz uh, Skivvy singlet, not a singlet, long sleeve shirt on the back. Bought up with spanners, not spoons. I have, I don't know if you have, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, these have just hit the website and people are loving them. Reason for that, I've been wearing it and it's hot today. They've got this crazy, awesome fabric, super lightweight. And what it actually does is absorb the moisture from your body and pushes it to the outside of the fabric. So it can then be evaporated, keeping the wearer fresh and cool. Uh, anyway, I'm not even joking guys, these are actually awesome to wear. I think I'm actually gonna use the same brand to design like a fishing tee as well, so you guys can have a bit more of a cool design. But this is more for the high-vis guys who want it for work or in the shed at home. Anyway, looking at what we've got here. So here's the sender that we've just pulled out. It's, it's actually looking not too bad. The filter's a little bit filled up, which I was suspecting. But if we get our new pump here, pretty much need to work out the best way to join these up. Now, one thing I've noticed straight off the bat is the plugs different. So we're gonna to have to take the soldered ends off here and add the new plug in, the new type. Also, it's flipped around the way that the inlet comes in. So looking at this, it's gonna to have to sort of go in that position there, which makes me think the actual filter sock. Yeah, this sock here only goes on one way and that goes that way. So yeah, it looks like it should work. I won't have to do too many modifications to the sender. It'll kind of sit like so. And I'm just gonna double check with the little swirl cage pot inside the fuel tank that it can sort of sit that way, but there's a good amount of space around it so I don't see it being an issue. We can reuse that same housing there and things will be looking good. So we'll get that sorted out, get the old one out of here and solder that new uh, connector in and look at putting that new pump in. Oh geez, we're leaking fuel. 
Remind me not to do any grinding in here while there's fuel everywhere. Good God. All right, so this is that regulator that I've pulled out. Now, this is sort of a, something I got from the US and it's, it's a, a filter slash regulator. So it actually automatically regulates the pressure, but that only works off sort of a standard pressure pump. It's not gonna handle this high pressure pump with the amount of flow that's going through. So I've got this new Aeroflow one here. Um, I had a look at how it's gonna mount on the back there. And I think what I'm gonna have to do is flatten out this little bracket here. If I can get that thing sitting straight, It'll be looking like it's gonna sit in the right position where we can get all the connections and fittings onto it. Gonna to have to buy a whole bunch of new fuel hose to reach. I'm gonna replace these ones just because it's simple and easy to do and might as well do it um, so it lasts longer. And also the one running into the hard line on the car I'm gonna replace as well. I might put an inline filter in as well just because that was a filter ultimately. And this one has no filtration at all. It's just purely regulating. Um, so I'll sort that out. But before we get to that, while we're on the topic of fuel systems, here's a quick tip from Ryko about fuel systems in diesel vehicles. Now we all know that the power and torque made out of a diesel engine is to do with the efficiency it burns its fuel. But one thing that can kill a diesel engine is water contaminants in the injection system. The last thing you want to be is in a remote destination, fill up at a servo where you get some fuel contaminants, water into your injectors and destroy a beautiful engine. So Ryko have come up with this fuel filtration system which separates the water from your diesel, protecting your engine from any contaminants. Now this isn't designed to replace your standard filter, it is used as a pre-filter to get rid of the water before it enters the rest of the system. Now there is a small bowl at the bottom so you can physically see how much water it has captured and know when to drain it. What we're going to do today is look at installing this kit in a diesel vehicle. It is highly recommended that you use your local mechanic to get this system installed, but if you are handy on the tools it is quite simple to do at home. So once you've pulled your vehicle into your workshop, make sure you've got a nice clean space to work from. Switch off the vehicle and take the keys out of the ignition. First you want to work out where you can mount this filter. Somewhere on the back firewall is a common place for this. Before you mount this permanently to your firewall, you want to install the fittings first. Make sure you install the fuel hose fittings using either an elbow bend or a straight connection. When tightening these barbs and fittings onto the bracket, make sure to use Loctite sealant supplied. Next you want to remove the fuel line that goes between the fuel tank and the standard factory filter. Next you want to get a fresh bit of hose and connect it from the outlet of the Ryko filter into the standard factory system. Make sure to use hose clamp provided on these fittings. Then you want to trace back the factory fuel line where it runs back to the tank. Install a new piece of line between the inlet of the Ryko filter and the tank barb connection. Make sure to also use hose clamps on these fittings as well. Next you want to undo the filter and fill it with diesel ready to reinstall. It is important to do this so that your system gets bled correctly. Before you try and start it, use your factory filter pump to prime the system. Try and start the vehicle and it should run properly. Make sure to check for leaks around the system, around the Ryko filter and your factory fittings. Make sure to inspect the fuel bowl. If any water is discovered there, drain the system by loosening that bottom screw lightly. So there we go, it is quite a straightforward assembly to put this water fuel separator into your diesel engine. It is an absolute must if you want to go touring in those remote locations. To find out more information about this Ryko fuel filtration system, I'll drop a link down below to their website where you can find out more. All right, there we have it. We've got the sender all put together, the new pump installed, um, everything's looking good. Now, I just want to chuck this in the car and make sure that all this bottom section does clear inside the tank. And then what I've got is also a replacement O-ring. So this fuel sender O-ring is something you might as well change when it's out because it does swell from being in there and you generally can't reuse them once that send has been taken out. So that's just a genuine part from Nissan. It's only about 25 bucks or so, so I got one of them. I normally get a second one for a spare as well. We'll get this whole deal put back in and then it's pretty much sealed up the tank and we have just got to worry about that regulator fuel lines and what's happening at the other end as well. All right, so I've basically committed that I've got the torch in there and pretty much had a look and it was just the corner of that little strainer that was touching on the on the baffle there anyway so 
just the little corners kind of folded down a bit. I think it's just going to be fine the way it runs, but we'll do a bit of a primer test run to make sure it's not going to be sort of making a whole bunch of noise. But I think that's going to work for us. We can move on now to mounting that regulator and then getting all this stuff plumbed up. There we go. All right, so what we're going to look at now is basically all these fittings for this regulator. Now, I'm using everything you, when it comes to fuel system, everything you kind of use with these kind of connectors are what's called AN fittings. Um, they're anodized, they're really like precisionally cut. So a lot of these joins don't need seals or O-rings or anything. It's just a flush fit up to the connector. So I'm reusing these right angles from the old fuel system. And then I've basically got some new male to male adapters which do have an O-ring because that's what this regulator takes. Installing all of those and then we'll be looking at mounting it into the patrol. Always got dirty f***ing lenses, Jesus. So it's always performance parts that cost the most. I've got a couple of filters now and believe it or not, these little fittings, these things, I've now spent over $200 on those bloody AN fittings. It's just performance parts. It's like a tax on top of whatever else you want to spend on a car. It's ridiculous. Anyway. So before I had that regulator was a filter in itself and then I run a 40 mic run up near the fuel rail. So I'm going to upgrade all that and what I've got is a 60 micron now near this regulator and then I'm going to upgrade the one near the rail to a 10 micron so it's even finer again to really filter out this fuel. Um, obviously there's a strainer on the bottom of the pump as well so that's going to get all the big chunks in the tank and then it runs through the 60 and then it goes up to the 10. So we'll install these now, just going to have one basically on the back side of that regulator, just bolted straight into that and then the hose off the end of that. And then the one up at the fuel rail, I had a couple of fittings to get which go to a dash six AN fitting. So that's just going to replace basically the one that's already in there. And then we'll be looking good to pretty much test this system out. I'll get all that plumbed up and then I'm going to put that little gauge on the end of the fuel rail as well so we can look at what pressures we're running. And then we'll basically start the thing up. I'll have a probably a GoPro at the end there where I can pretty much look at what that gauge is doing and then just play with this Allen key here. By twisting it in, you actually get more pressure go in by winding the nut out, you're actually gonna reduce your rail pressure. So we're gonna try and set it at about 58 PSI. Now that is sort of the standard pressure for an LS fuel rail. Um, and that should be enough to get us going. And then it's gonna have to go back on the dyno and possibly hook up this um, proportion valve, which basically sucks or boosts or vacuum from your inlet manifold. And it changes your pressure on a one to run ratio. So as the boost pressure goes up in the manifold, it increases the pressure in the rails. Because what happens is, your injector in a standard condition is under vacuum, so as it opens, it gets fuel sucked into it. But when you've got a boosted turbo supercharged engine, if, if you get a lot of pressure coming to your inlet manifold and then as the valve opens, you've actually got a pressurized cylinder, which means when that injector opens at 58 PSI, it's gonna have back pressure pushing back against it and you're actually gonna get less fuel go into your cylinder. So that proportioning valve boosts your pressure to match that manifold pressure and it gives you the right amount of injection going in and then you get your fuel air ratios correct. So you'll probably hook that up, otherwise you just leave it to atmosphere just to leave it running for now. Um, but once it's all plumbed up, let's sort out that, that pressure and see how we're looking. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is we've got everything hooked up. There was a small leak at the back of this um, regulator. There's a little thread where you can actually put a gauge and um, yeah, I guess they don't seal it from factory because it started pissing fuel. So I've sealed that up now. And what I've done is actually got my GoPro at the gauge at the rail. So now we're gonna start it up and I've got an Allen key here. I'm just gonna adjust this screw so we can get about 58 PSI at idle. That's sort of the standard pressure in the rail there. So it's an easy way for me to see what's in there. So we'll fire it up and see what it's sitting at. take a while to run but you see it's slightly down a bit so I might twist this around it's down I'll bring this up you see it's starting to go up on the gauge there get it up to around 58 and that's pretty close there I reckon that's looking pretty good now so I'll switch it off we'll check for leaks and everything so last thing you do is check all the connections obviously got that filter up at the front that we change as well this filter here down the back all looks pretty good but before it sort of switches off. All right, it's all looking pretty good. I smell a little bit of fuel, but I think that was from before. 
And last thing I'm gonna do is tighten up this nut now so it doesn't um, move around as we're driving. Um, and it's pretty much time to get on the dyno, so keep it tuned. Once we're over in Melbourne, we'll head back to Harrop and get Joel to take a look at it and probably hook up this um, proportionate vacuum valve so we can get a, a variable fuel pressure on there. Uh, but other than that, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment down below what you want to see next on this thing. Obviously, we're going to grab the dyno video coming out <coughs> very soon. <coughs> there will be some content around that um, intake stuff. So I'm going to do a, probably a Tech Tuesday on TIG welding on that because it's a good opportunity to weld up all that stainless intake piping. And then we'll have new fuel, new intake. As everyone knows, more fuel, more air means more horsepower. Obviously, if you want to grab one of these high-vis um, long sleeve, I've been wearing this this whole episode. Super cool, super comfy, very lightweight. Go over to the website. I've got a bunch of them left there. So grab one of them if you're into it. And I'll see you guys next episode. Peace out. Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it. And most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.